This conference will now be recorded. So guys, here in lead module, guys, could you hear me? Okay, cool. So we saw how to use lead module and how to get the current time. We will see a few, few more methods today, useful methods. So to work on daytime, we have to uh, first input the daytime module, correct? So I'm just inputting daytime and then I'll work later on that. I have daytime dot time, which is going to give me the time in the given format. So yeah, let's see a few more examples here. So I'm inputting the daytime. Later, I want the current time while the program is running. So I will give I'm giving current data is daytime. I'm calling dot now. So in this module, there is something, some method called now, which will give me the current daytime. So here we are, uh, we just saw what is the current time it is giving me my current time including the date, everything to the uh, very precisely.
So uh, the current format uh, which it is printing is uh, first it will print the year, then month, then date, and then have a minute, second, and followed by millisecond. It's a six digit number, right? If I don't want millisecond, and if you want to change the format, then I can do. There is a method called strf time, string format time. So here y represent here, m month, d day, and then here everything is capital. Have a minute second. So here I'm removing the millisecond. I don't want this millisecond to be printed. So now the format changes and prints me the output accordingly. I can also parse date. So here I have given a date format. Otherwise, what I can do format a date, whatever what was the current time. So initially we fetched current time and on current time we formatted it and we have the formatted output. I can give that that variable also here, format a date here, which is going to give me this. But uh, let's consider I have given some um, hard coded value, the date and time. So here I am passing, I am formatting it. I am stripping the date. Here I can Okay, sorry. So here the thing is, here we have given data as a string, right? Okay. So here data is a string, but I want to convert it into a data. So usually data and time will not be inside uh, any codes. Whenever you have something inside codes, it's called string, right? Uh, now you cannot app use any more uh, date time function on this because now it is considered as a string so whenever for example if you are getting the date and time from the user as an input always input will be in the form of string but later if you want to use uh, you want to do some process on top of it date time for example we saw we did a minus between two date and time right we did arithmetic d1 minus d2 so if you use d2 which uh, which we got from the user directly because now this is a date but this is a string you cannot minus uh, you cannot do arithmetic operation between date and string data type right so here i'm just converting it i'm just passing it and converting it into date so i just mentioned that strip time so what it would do it would convert the string to date Later, I can process anything, any date functions on top of this converted date. So we have current date and time and also we have past date. Now let me do arithmetic operation on it. So it is giving me what is the difference between both the date. If I haven't converted here, if, if these two lines, imagine if these two lines are not present, I have only this date string, then it, it is going to throw an error here.
so for the first difference i printed out the difference but for the second one it is throwing me an error telling type error because both of both of both are of different type this is of type string this is of type date so it is telling it is uh, we cannot do any operation on it arithmetic operation Now we are going to see some important function which is always handy when I write Python in my application. So it's something called sleep. So I'll be having Python to do many things. But between those two things, I want Python to wait. For example, initially I'm running, I'm, I'm, I'm having a Python file. The top portion, the top 10 lines, it's generating a CSV. I'm generating a CSV with multiple data inside it. So I'm generating 5,000 records. I'm generating 10,000 records. So there would be a delay, right? If I generate 10,000 records, it will take few seconds at least. Not immediately, immediately within microsecond, it is not going to give me the file. It is going to create, uh, it is going to take few seconds. But after this, I, ha I have one more file, which what it will do, it will, copy the generated file from the current path to some target path. So after the file is generated, I'm copying it to the target path. For example, if the file is still creating, still it is processing because I have lakhs and lakhs of record inside it, I want to create in that way. It will take few seconds, but without giving any pass, I'm just uh, calling the next program, which will which is trying to access the created file to put it into the target file, it is going to throw error because the created file is not present in the current directory only because it's still processing. So it has to wait for a few seconds before uh, copying it, copying the CSV file from current to target because it's still processing, right? So most of the time this, this would help me. So if you want to pass a program for specific duration, then you have to go for sleep. See, before sleep is printed, after a delay of five seconds, it is printing after sleep. So the first thing is happening, then it is waiting. And after a few seconds, it is calling. So here you can hear whatever we give, it is in second format. You can give 10 seconds, 15 seconds, you can give few minutes also. Uh, that depends upon the use case. So this is how you can wait before calling the next function if you want to wait and sometime i'll be measuring the performance of a program like how long a particular program is taking time and all those things if i want to know how long does it take to create 10 lakh file and how long does it take to create 1 million Okay, 10 lakh and 1 million are same. Like what is the difference between 1 lakh and 10 lakh? How, what is the time difference? How long it is taking extra? If you want to measure all those performance related items, I'll go for this. So here, what we're doing, we're just importing time. And then I have given start time. I have, I have created a variable called start time and end time. My execution will be here, whatever I'm creating a file, copying it to the target directory, all those things I'll do here. Uh, so here I'm capturing time dot time, dot time which is a start time. And uh, for example, it is starting around 7.21. So here it will give me 7.21. Then later what I'm doing, my execution will start. All the logics in the program will run. Later again, I'm capturing end time. So now it, this execution took one hour almost. Consider if it is 8.21. So it goes to this line. Again here, it is capturing the current time, the same time dot time, which will give 8.21 but this time because that time would be 8.21. Then later you can subtract it. You will know what is the execution time. 
so here i am using input i am importing time module and using time dot time otherwise i can import date time module and i can use dot now but dot now is going to give me in the date and time format if you want only the time So instead of having a code here, I will pass it for five second, fifteen second maybe. Let's run this. Okay, it has printed the start time. So it printed the end time also. So execution time is somewhere around 15 point something second. Here this number I have already said. Um, so for example, there is some calendar. For example, if the calendar, I don't remember exactly what is a calendar in Python. Usually it will be 1990. Every programming language will have a calendar. It will have 1990, 12 a.m. That is a start time of Python. Maybe that he thinks that the world created at 1990 12 a.m so from there every second is like incremented 12 a.m 12 1 12 2 so it is like added into the counter 1 2 3 4 so this is like how many seconds or how many minutes since 1990 so it keeps on increasing that what does it do in the calendar there is something running always in the background in python which will keep on increment every second it will keep on increment the time the seconds so i'm just making use of it so now i this in, in this moment what would be the time that time i'm printing taking and then later in this moment what would be that when you minus both it is going to give me the exact seconds or minutes whatever it is if i want to convert into minute what i would do um execution time it will be some for example consider it is 120 second so I'll mention, I'll here, I'll divide it by 2. Sorry, I'll divide it by 60. So 120 divided by 60 will be 2 minutes, right? Then here I'll not put seconds, here I'll put minutes. So I'll mention like execution time divided by 60. And here I'll put minutes if I want to put it in minutes. Similarly, I can do it for hours also. then we will go back to the collection topic which we took yesterday so like we we have a module called collection we saw what is counter and then we saw what is a, a most common inside counter if, if i give a string what is the most common and since it is in a dictionary Format. So I am. We were trying to get item values. So did you guys try this on your own with the Jupyter notebook? Yes, I know. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't try, no, then today after two days, if I take some advanced topic in the same topic some advanced methods or something you will not remember this and what i take uh, it uh, it will not make much sense so like just go and run and see and remember all the names that's all so we saw default dictionary and we saw name cupel and we also saw uh, deck which is a double ended queue list which can be 
access from both end and we saw max line and we saw chain map which is to create a single dictionary from multiple dictionary and then we saw order dictionary so now we are going to see user dictionary so we have three topics in collections which are user dictionary, user list, and user string. So user dictionary. So user dictionary, uh, it's kind of a class inside a module collection that act as a that act as a wrapper around the dictionary object, providing simple way to create custom dictionary. And it often used as a base class for creating new classes that need dictionary behavior. Let's see, let's see in an example. Then you will understand. So here from this model I'm importing user dictionary and I'm creating a class called my dictionary and the user dictionary is given to it and later what I'm doing uh, this is like self we usually have no we have set item so here we are setting some items okay and we are setting key and value and I'm just mentioning that value is always multiplied by two then later what I do, I create an object. So why do we create class so that we can create different, different objects using this template, right? So now I'm creating my object, my dictionary, which is of class, which is using the class, my dictionary. And I'm just passing. See here, this is a key and this is a value. But the, what the class should do is, it is always should multiply the value into two. So if I print this my dictionary, it, this will be passed into user dictionary, and then this this my this value is given as a user dictionary, and then later it is going to multiply the value. Okay, then we are trying to print that value. Let's see this. So here I have passed five and ten, but the output is ten and twenty. So here I'm I do not have a uh, I do not have a name. Uh, predefined name or something or predefined dictionary or something here I'm telling you would get a dictionary as an output I'm just mentioning that so uh, to do that you can use the user dictionary so it, it knows okay some uh, what is a for example if this my dictionary so inside the class there is an argument we would be always getting an argument and that argument is dictionary dictionary object so it, it does know what kind of object we are going to pass into that particular class so that is a uh, that is a use of user dictionary so that later i can create my own custom dictionary and uh, i can apply some logic on my dictionary so the, the logic here i'm applying is multiplying the values by two So user list is similar to user dictionary. Can you explain so again on user dictionary? Huh. So here, usually we create a class, right? We create a class and what we do? We then create an object based on the class, right? So what I'm yes. doing here, uh, here when I create an object, I, I have to pass some value. So usually, for example, if I'm create a class called animal here, I'm going to get some detail from there from uh, while creating an object or I'll, I'll be getting some name. For example, if I'm creating an animal, then later 
i'll create using that class i'll create dog and then i'll have to give dog name and what is the breed of the dog all those detail will be passing right parameters then yes, i'll create parameters. an object so here here when i give user dictionary i'm just mentioning see i'm going to give a dictionary object in the input i mean as an argument whenever while creating an object based on this class i'll be giving an argument and that argument is user dictionary if you don't have there is no other way to mention that you are going to pass a dictionary so that mm -hmm. is why i am mentioning it here so when you use user dictionary later you can use super and then you can use set item so it it knows that it has key and value then later i am here the logic i am applying is multiplying the value by 2 whatever value i get and multiplying it by 2 so that is a logic simple logic i have applied so when i create my dictionary uh, i pass this later it does uh, passing the dictionary, the dictionary as a argument yeah we are passing a dictionary as an argument dictionary object okay. so i'm telling here you would be getting a dictionary object as an argument not string or something else similarly the url list here we are telling that i'm uh, using the class i'm going to create a list sorry similarly what i am doing i am telling import user list and i am giving user list so it knows a class knows that the argument will be list and later i am applying simple logic that append append something so let's run this similarly we have user string you are on mute anu oh sorry so you you did hear this right this so similarly we are passing user string i mean similarly we have a object called class called user string so here we are telling class that i will be passing string as an object in a in a argument so this is this is how because in in function when you create you just create def function and in the parameter you give in the close and open bracket you give x y z later you can give anything to it right similarly for class it's not that straight forward how we do it in um with a def uh, function so i have to clearly tell uh, what should i what should i uh, what i'm going to pass as a argument So that is why we have this collection. You just have to import it and use it. Use this. That's all. Why in the print statement we are giving my string dot capitalize? We already we have so given in the return statement dot upper. Let me.
you have given the upper uh, method mm. oh, my string we should uh, oh, my string we are doing have function we are passing the okay So here, if you are not telling that you have to make it to upper, this capitalize will not have any effect on it. So I have removed this upper. Now the my string and my string dot capitalize doesn't is not going to work. When I uncomment this then it is going to work so my class should tell clearly what i'm going to do then later i can use capitalize or upper all those things i can do So capitalize is a fun uh, met method, right? For uh, yeah. my class. Yeah. So correct. yeah. Uh, so once you are giving hello, then uh, you are calling uh, with the object, right? My capital. Mm -hmm. Okay. So initially, what I'm doing, I'm create. I have a class, my string, correct? And I'm passing a string. So using this, I, I created my own object. So this is my object. When I so here, when it enters this, uh, enters it, when I write this line, no, I am telling my string, and I'm here calling the class name and passing the input. So it knows that this is a class. It has to go to that particular class, and it has an argument. It has to get. So we have created a class here. So I am creating my string, and then a class as a function called capitalize. If I want to get, make use of that particular function later, because whatever function is available inside the class, I can use. If I have an object of the class, right? If I, if I create an object from the class, then I can access all the function inside the class, right? So right. here I'm accessing it. I'm accessing okay. this capitalize and I'm printing it here. So here, actually what I'm doing, I'm uh, using upper. Upper is a method we know, right? on the string when you give upper yeah, okay. everything will mm -hmm. be go to the upper case and then here i'm calling calling that function that's all i do uh, guys give me two minutes uh, actually my daughter woke up i'll just leave her in the other room and i'll be back
Uh, guys, I'm back. <coughs> we'll now go to the next chapter. <laughs> Anu, I have one more doubt here. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, uh, can we give written shelves dot upper? Or uh, guess we had to give data. Why you are giving data? For uh, for self, you know, yeah. Self, you know, you have to give self, right? Uh, and data. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Self, yeah. Uh, self, mm. we know. Dot mm-hmm. upper. Can, can we give or we should not? Uh, we had to do huh. this way. Also. So self is nothing but what self is telling. It it belongs to current class. That's all it is telling. But. Where are we getting the data from? So there should be some data, right? See here in this capitalized function, I don't have any input at all. I'm not passing any input, but I know whatever is given in the user string, I'm going to use. The class will have a string, will have some string, and that string will be used later. That that alone I know because this is a function created inside the class, and a class will be having a string. So when I have to you access the string of a class, I have to give dot data. So whatever data the class has, take the data and use upper on it. I see. So yeah, we, usually we we pass some input to the function, right? If at all we are getting the input from the user and then we process something. Here I'm not giving any input because it it belongs. This function belongs to class. So to access the class data, I'm just giving dot data. Got it, Anu. Thank you. So we are going to see some advanced data structure here. Okay. First, we will start with the number integer. So whatever data data structure we learned previously, we are going to see the advanced version. I didn't teach this before because it will become too much, and this is hardly rarely used. So the first one is hexadecimal. So there is a function called hex, which will convert a given number to hexadecimal. If in case you want to do that in your in your program, then you can give. So here I'm just converting some number to 46, and then the hexadecimal format is this. So if you want to have hexadecimal, then you can go with this, and then I'm going to give 512. Similarly, if you want to have a binary, you can go with bin binary. So 
So here I'll give one, two, three, four. It is going to make it is going to give me a binary format of a given number. Every number has some binary format in the computer, right? So I'll be giving that. The first two characters are telling that it is in the format of binary uh, 0b. Here, 0x, the first two characters are telling it's in the format of hexadecimal. The remaining is a original hexadecimal number of 512. And here, f6 is the original hexadecimal number. Here, 100 is a number for binary. You can, you can add 0 also before, 0, 100. But here, we have a b, the second character which tells which format it is in and uh, we can do exponential we have already seen exponential so usually what we do if you want to do exponential we give x star star 2 if you want to do a power or a uh, cap symbol right but there is a function called pow we, we also saw that right And that is something called absolute value. I believe this also we saw before. So absolute function is going to return an absolute value of a number. Um, the argument may be integer or floating number. The argument may be a complex number, but only the absolute value is returned. So I'm just uh, turning minus a negative number, which is a floating point also. But I get a positive number. So round is going to give a precision, do a precision. So here, this is my number. I want to round it to two digits. So I am telling two as a second argument. It is going to give me the rounded value. Similarly, if I give round for just a uh, integer value, it is going to give me the same number. When you give minus, the second argument, if it is in the minus, then you are going to see some different result. So it is going to give me 400. Why, Anu? What is the reason? Uh, that's how round will work. Let me show a few more examples. So, um, a round is a built in function. Whenever you uh, give a number, uh, in decimal point it is going to round it to you accordingly what you ask but if the second argument is minus 2 which means it is rounding to the nearest multiple of 100 or 10 so what is the nearest multiple of 100 or 10 is 400 
let me put it here so here the second argument is minus 2 which means you are rounding, rounding it to the nearest multiple of 100 how how did i get this number 100 10 to the power of minus 2 so whenever you give minus that number is taken to the 10 to the power of let me So here I'm giving minus one, which is nothing but 10 to the power of minus one, which is nothing but 10, 10 to the power, 10 to the power one, actually to the power, it doesn't matter whether it is a negative or positive. It is going to give you, give you the return, the exact absolute value, but minus one means the Python knows that it has to go and take 10 to the power of that particular number here, 10 to the power of one is nothing but uh, 10. So I want uh, 10 multiples, either it can be 30 or 40 which is most nearest 40 is most near so i am giving 40 40 is most nearest to 39 than 30 right So here it is giving zero because uh, 10 to the power of four is 10 followed by four zeros, which is 10,000, right? It cannot go to 10,000 because this is way more lesser than 10,000. That's why it is returning zero. Here 10 to the power of three is nothing but thousand, right? Thousand multiple. Thousand multiple means thousand, one, thousand, thousand into two is two thousand, thousand into three is three thousand. So, uh, thousand multiples from one to ten. Thousand one sa, thousand two sa, thousand ten is thousand nine is nine thousand. So until then it is going to work. So if this is three, it's starting from three, and the next digit is nine, which is greater than five. So it is rounding it to the four thousand one. Got it? Yes. Okay. We will now see advantage string. Few advanced strings are capitalized, upper, lower. I believe you all know that. The one thing which might be new is location and counting. So if I give So let me create a variable. And later, I'll give count. So yeah, it is going to tell me 
how many times it found the occurrence so it is going to return the number of occurrences then i'll ask i'll ask for location of the letter o it is going to give me the index starting position of the it is going to give only the first occurrence not the second occurrence So here I'm using going to use a method called center. Let's see what what it does. I'm giving 20 and then I'm giving Z, but I'm applying it on yes. Yes is nothing but hello world, right? Let's see. So what it does, it's it make a 20 20 character memory and it places hello world in between. And the remaining extra spaces are filled with Z. So center method allows you to place your string in the center between the length. If, if uh, length is given, it, uh, it creates a 1-1 one, one memory, 20 memory and then it's going to place uh, our string in the mid center and the extra space, whatever we give, it will be printed. I actually never used it. <laughs> But since this is a, and I never use in the real world. And we have something called expand tab. Let's see. So I want a tab space between two characters. So here I'm telling this is my letter one and let I mean word two. And in between I want expand tabs. It is going to give me a tab space. And other advanced topic is is method. I believe we have we have used uh, this in some example so it is going to check if the string is some case or not so i have a i have a string then i'm asking if the given string the for example if the user has inputted i'm just checking if it is a given the user input is alphanumeric and it is alphanumeric because it has alpha character inside but if i want to check only if it is alpha not numeric at all then again uh, it is going to tell me and i have one more if, if check it is going to tell whether the given is in lower format or not since it is in lower format it is going to give me true So I'm asking if it is title, which means the first character is uh, in uppercase. No, it is not. So it is going to give me false. So I'm asking whether the given in entered input is a space. If user just give space, 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 and then give enter, it will be taken as an input, right? So I'm checking if the given is space. If it is space, then user is going to throw an error telling, I mean, we are going to handle it. We can throw an error telling, see, you have given a space, but give some character, put some character. And there is one more thing which is very useful. It checks whether it ends with, it is ending with O. Which, which means nothing but I'm asking directly what I'm doing is I'm asking if S of minus one, which means the last index from the last, the first one, the last index is O is equal to, I'm just asking if S of, S of minus one is equal to equal to O. 
if if so it is going to give me true otherwise it is going to give me false so the next thing is we have seen split which means uh, we if we have multiple carrot multiple words in a sentence if the user is giving we can split and we can get it in the form of list right we can get the for example if i'm asking to enter 10 different numbers the user would be uh, typing 10 different number when you split it it will be considered as a separate number and it will be put inside list right that's how the split will work now now what you are going to say is i'm just telling split a uh, is whatever is there inside is at e when you found e split there so it is going to remove e and then split before e and after e whatever is there it is going to split split in that way but the problem here is e is completely removed it is wiped off so if i don't want that but i want to split based on that then i can go for partition so what i'll do here i'm just giving split based on partition blazon is it is going to partition the given word before and after l So we, we have few more topics like advanced set dictionary list. Um, we will see them tomorrow. I'll download this as well. Okay, guys, thank you. We can wind up the session here today. Thanks. Bye.